stages movement. The positive stage, or power stroke, the leg actually generates forward force. From the moment the hind paw reaches a point directly under the hip joint, the limb is engaged in acceleration. A powerful thrust ends in a fully extended leg in a completely open hock joint, propelling the animal forward. The length and angulation of the bones in the hindquarters and their relative positions are the factors that regulate the energy developed during this motion. The rear quarters are composed of four main bones. The pelvis, the femur, or thigh bone, the tibia, or stifle, and what we will call the tarsus, or hock. Analysis of these individual components will help us to discover how the dog's power output can be maximized and most efficiently converted into forward motion. The pelvis is one of the most important bones in the skeleton of a trotting dog. It's the primary bone forming what conformation judges call the croup. The term croup refers to the outward, visible anatomical area that includes the pelvis, the muscle covering the pelvis, and the tail set. As we'll see later, the relationship between the croup and the actual lay of the dog's pelvis is not as straightforward as we might think. The pelvis is divided into three separate regions, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. In an x-ray film, a puppy shows these three components as separate bones until later in life when they fuse into one solid mass. The pelvis is welded to the spine at the sacrum. This attachment is relatively rigid and creates a permanent angle in relation to the horizontal plane. And we think sometimes that as puppies develop, their croup angle changes. Croup angle does not change. The croup gets longer. The muscle covering uh, becomes more prevalent and it gives you an indication of some changes in the croup area, but actually pretty much when the dog is already established, uh, calcified, that croup is going to stay in that position until it dies. During locomotion, force generated by the sweep of the hind...